Welcome to Live the Fuel, where we fuel your health, business, and lifestyle. And now your host, Scott Mulvaney. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So I am bringing on a new guest co-host because we do this all the time. I, I'm just never going to run out of meeting people. This is just so much fun. This is why I love podcasting. But listen, let's dig into it, okay? She has helped over a million people, that's right, million people, find their purpose and fulfill on their God-given destiny. I love that statement. Uh, she started her career by working with families at a local mental health agency as a clinical psychologist. And for those of you who subscribe to this show, you know how much I love psychology. And she has continued on to use her talents with It Works Global to build a large team of motivated, positive, and enthusiastic business owners. So she's an author. She's about to become another like round two author, round three author. I don't even know. We're gonna we're gonna catch up on that today too. But she's also well connected with a powerful influencer, Jack Canfield. We're gonna have fun with that as well because I've met him before. Uh, but without further ado, let's bring her on the show. Welcome, Denise Walsh. <laughs> hey Scott. Hey everyone. So I'm loving this because yes, I had to name drop the man, Jack Canfield. Yeah. Um, I got to see him. You ever hear of Thrive Make Money Matter? I have, yeah. Yeah. So I've I've gone to that every year the past couple of years and and he was there for that and the guy just never ceases to amaze. I just he's been doing it a long time. He has. <laughs> he has. He's a staple in the industry, that's for sure. Well, and how long is so Part of your background is obviously you became one of his certified trainers, correct? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how long have you been a certified trainer with the Canfield camp? For a few years now. Okay. I've been an entrepreneur for 12 and um, we kind of hit the top of our company and I said, what's next? And Jack Canfield entered my email. <laughs> okay. And, so and then it was Maxwell? Because like you're also hooked up with John Maxwell, Maxwell too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And we did that this past January. Talk about surrounding yourself with powerful influencers. Well, uh, that's the name of the game, right? You have to keep leveling up. So I hear. I mean, it's a thing. Um, it is. Everyone says it. It's people true. talk about it. They host events, you know, like like Thrive, and mm -hmm. uh, people have webinars. They have podcasts. All all of this wonderful stuff that you and I are doing today. It's like, hey, who else can we influence? Who else can we gain influence from? Mm -hmm. and well, and they, uh, we all know they say you're like the five people you hang around. And so why Jim not Rome. have it be Jack Canfield and John Maxwell? <laughs> I'd be all right with that. Yeah, I mean, I purposely pay to go to events that those guys speak at. So clearly that, that's a win. <laughs> I've read almost all of their books, I feel like. And so when you get to meet them in person, you feel like you already know them. You're kind of already in their head. So it was really kind of cool to experience them live and actually get to have conversations and realize like they're they're just people, right? Who have a vision and work hard, just like we do. They put on their pants one leg at a time. What's that saying? It's just like everybody yeah, else. So just like everybody else. I mean, who knows? They just maybe, know maybe what they, they want. Maybe honestly, they have a robot that helps with that. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> maybe they outsource that. Yeah. Could you go ahead and just help me with that whole pants process? That'd be great. Um Seriously, if you can't put your own pants on, unless you have a health related issue, uh, then there's something wrong. So, um, but so well, did, I, was it their influence that got you into, I'm diving right in here. I'm, I'm, yeah, go you're, ahead. Feel, you're feeling the fire. So you, you did the book thing. Mm -hmm. I'm excited by this because literally the show I just got done recording with another guest co-host, she's also an author and I'm currently be, well, according to her, I am an author because I've been published in a magazine four times now. So she's like, Scott, you actually already are an author. You just haven't re wrote your book yet. But as I'm talking to you right now, I've already completed the first 25,000 words. So I might be done. I don't know. Um, it might be time for editing. Congratulations. That's exciting. Yes. So that's a pain in the butt, by the way. <laughs> what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I really have I've been doing this type of work for over a decade. And I was like, how do I reach more people with less of my time, right? Because mm -hmm. now I'm a mom, I've got a seven-year-old, a four-year-old, I wanna go on field trips, I wanna like do life, but I still wanna make an impact. And so that's where I thought, all right, podcast, so I have a podcast as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then the journal and the workbook. Well, and the journal's coming. coming, that's why I kinda hinted at, right? Yep, and you already have coming. out how to retire your husband. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when, when did that come out again? That was... 
Ooh, that was a few years ago. Yeah, I kind of I feel like it while. was 2013. Yeah. Um, that was our journey through entrepreneurship, kind of going from an employee mindset to entrepreneur mindset. And that there is, we talk a lot about mindset on this show too. Again, that's why I was excited to bring you on once I found out about you. I was like, ooh, psychology. Yeah. Uh, because we talk a lot about how ways to fuel your health, your business, your lifestyle. And across all three of those domains, your mindset is a part of all of that. I mean, I have a regular sports psychologist I bring on every month. Uh, shout out to Dr. Megan Cannon because she's got the sports mindset and I love tying that to business as well. Um, I mean, is that, so you having the psych background though, mm -hmm. was that a key kind of like, oh man, that's gonna be massive to me to document because of you switching from the employee to the entrepreneurial mindset. So you yourself had to go through the mental shift. I did. I did have to go through that. I mean, my, my first job as a clinical psychologist was at a local community mental health where I was underpaid, overworked, burnt out, working for the government. It was not living the dream. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so the government thing is nice. I didn't know nice. if I could do this or not. So I still had to grow. I still had to like have that identity shift of going from a, a employee, tell me what to do and I'll do it to being an entrepreneur, having a vision and working towards it. And you know, being flexible along the way, but being a finisher throughout. And I didn't know if I could do that when I first started our business. And so as I grew into that role, yeah. And then I got to teach other people how to do it too. And that, that's, that's where the, the fun phase. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was like, Oh my gosh, this works. Everybody yeah. can do this. And like, so it's scary, like, but it's like, when you realize you, you finally pull that trigger, it's, it's not, you, you just, you can't, you can't keep acquiring knowledge and acquiring knowledge and acquiring knowledge and never sharing it. And I wanted to throw, shout it from the rooftops. You yeah. Know? And that's the fun of teaching is that I, yeah. I truly believe that everybody can teach something because we all know if, if I, if I walked into a room right now, I already know 60% more about at least one thing than 60% of the people in the room. So mm -hmm. talk about it, teach mm -hmm. it, share it. Right. Mm -hmm. So now when you guys clicked, I got I to gotta ask this because I love domain names and everything. So clearly your brand is your name, denisewalsh.com. Uh -huh. Yeah. And actually, let's go ahead and pop up a little screen sharing because you have your dream life action planner as soon as you come to your site. Mm -hmm. So when, when did you buy the name? When did you get a clue about owning your name online? Well, we've had several personas throughout our journey <laughs> and we realized your name doesn't change. So mm. we really needed, like we wanted to, we had taglines and all of that has kind of changed, evolved as our sure. business grew, as we changed, as times changed. And so our name doesn't change. So we really wanted to just brand the name, right? Okay. Well, and that's why I love that because I tell people all the time from a branding perspective is, listen, if you've got a great brand concept and your name isn't really well known, then you've got a choice. You got a fork in the road. You can, mm -hmm. you can grow the brand that is the, whatever you've created. Like me, I have lived the fuel. So you grow the brand and your name goes along with it. Or you know what? You're just going to dig in deep on the name recognition. Maybe you got some public exposure and you could just keep growing the name. Like mm -hmm. I, my, my one big client, he's, it's, it's all about his name. That's the way it's always mm -hmm. been. Uh, but it's interesting how people choose these paths, but it's interesting to your point. Great. We grew these different taglines or grew these different brands. And now it's like, well, who's always been there at the core of it. It's your name. Mm -hmm. So as I start increasing my public speaking, I'm eventually scottmulvaney.com just goes to livethefuel.com because I haven't felt the need to split it, you know, into its own brand site yet. So, right. yeah, that's fun. Yeah. We had original rap girl. Um, I had, I'm sorry, what? You know, original rap girl. W R W R A P is for our, our rap company. That okay. Okay. I just want to be like, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. There's, there's some rapping in here. No, What's going on? Yeah. We've had a lot of different things throughout the years. I mean, we've been in the business for 12 years and a lot of things have changed, but, mm. but that's why when I started creating more products, we were like, I need to stick with my name because the product can branch out. True. That's true. And yes. And as, as you've, as you've already hinted, you got a journal coming out soon. So that's mm -hmm. a, that counts as another book, right? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, well, was John Lee Dumas, he, he's released journals, <laughs> right? So yeah. hey. I got them both on the bookshelf back there. So I don't use them though, but <laughs> I don't know if you ever bought, bought his journals or not. Not yet. Not oh, yet. Okay. 
Yeah, you're, you're de- in the podcast world, though, you're definitely familiar with Johnny Dumas. So Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he crushed it with his crowdfunding when he launched it. I, I've never seen anybody launch a book so successfully on Kickstarter. I think he was the third most successful book launch ever done on a Kickstarter. Interesting. I'll have to research that. Well, yeah, think about it. Yeah, it's the, it's the, one is the Mastery Journal. Where's the other one? Oh. Yeah, so his first one was the Freedom Journal. Okay. That one crushed it. And then he released the Mastery Journal. So once you've documented your freedom goals and you've journaled your way to what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Then you master the process and you start building and growing a successful business beyond that. So he decided to launch them as journals. So, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I feel like so many of us know what to do, but we don't create the space to actually do it, mm-hmm. which is why I, I mean, that's a psychologist in me. I'm not just going to be like, do this later because <laughs> nobody does. No. So I'm going to do this now, write it now. I've got a live event in January. It's all workshop stuff. Boom. Because I'm like, I want to see transformation today. <laughs> we're going to make you cry today. We're going to make you feel, we're going to make you work. We're going to make you go through it now because that's why we're here is for change. And, uh, and so that's part of why it's a journal is so we can create the space for you to do the work like now. So with, with the action plan or your uh-huh. dream life action plan on the website, that's your free giveaway, you know, marketing yeah. gets people yeah. on your email list. But would you say that's kind of like a key stepping stone before that yeah. journal gets released? That was kind of like one of your necessary building blocks. Well, my husband's the, our digital marketer in the family and ah, he says, what's okay. the most important thing? And so the most important thing, like the most, the question I get the most as a trainer, coach, leader is what do I do? Hmm. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. What do I do? <laughs> I don't know how. That's what they tell me. Okay. Um, when I don't know that that's the correct answer or at the qu- correct question to ask, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. So I created the Dream Life Action Planner to help answer the most question the the biggest question I get which is what do I do I don't have time I want change but I don't know how to do it so the action planner is basically your time management tool where you take everything you give it a spot it's the 80 20 rule it's outsourcing it's all of like who am I going to ask for help we can't be do everything ourselves so Mm -hmm. uh, it's really every anytime I have a new goal this is the process I go through to give it a schedule uh, like a time on my schedule so I actually make progress and, and that's the skill that I'm teaching with the action planner. Well, so I got to dig into the psych. So uh-huh. the biggest thing that I coach people on too, and I've got a lot of athletic background. I've been a USSA ski race coach when I, over the years. And then I, I'm also a CrossFit coach in my free time. I don't really hold a normal schedule because I just don't have time. But like I, I coached a class yesterday for my buddy because it was his birthday weekend. Uh, I, I love coaching. I was a business coach in the corporate world. But the biggest thing I've learned with action taking is – if you've not sat down and taken the time to mm-hmm. at least answer the why, mm-hmm. right? Like, okay, maybe I don't know the exact business name yet, product name yet, anything else, but why do you want to possibly go down this road? And mm-hmm. if you got, if you, if you have put together the, the why that's so powerful that it just makes your stomach hurt. I, I don't know. That's just me. When I think about it, it's like, Oh, that's good. Now it's easy to then go download an action planner and then start, taking the necessary steps that maybe your planner helps people do. But what mm-hmm. do you think about this whole why concept? Mm. So personal, vi- like I feel like I'm a clarity queen. Like that's part, that's my thing. Clarity queen. And I want to help people create their own personal vision because when you see yourself three steps ahead of where you are, like the how figures itself out. You make time because you know what you want mm-hmm. and you know why you, it's like not just an idea. It's like in your gut and in your soul. So the clarity of what do I want? Why do I want it? What do I want my life to look like? All of those questions. Yeah, the who, what, why, you know. Exactly. It just makes, it fuels you, right? Mm-hmm. Just like you, it brand. fuels you, keeps you fueled. Yeah. So then you really are willing to climb the mountain to make it happen to, you know, because you, you it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. That's and true. like you mentioned, writing a book is not easy, but when you're fueled, you become a finisher. Like there's no other option. But it's funny because- I'm such a health and fitness now. That's why health is part of our target of this audience is because I tell people all the time, like if your health is in the crapper, how mm-hmm. do you expect to write the book, start a company? Like your healthy lifestyle is a huge component of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I've been talking about possibly writing a book for two years uh, from my backstory of when I went from the corporate life to being, you know, a federal wildland firefighter out West and then back again. And then, so it's like just sharing some of those 
the mental game and the shifts and the things I learned, I wanted to document that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't really click until actually I started doing these Thrive Make Money Matter events every year. And then I hard coded last year a four purpose concept into my business. So now there's a percentage of all income goes into a special account. So I started mm -hmm. putting in the steps, right? Defining the why more. And then I realized, mm -hmm. wait a minute, if I put, if I write the book, well, then I, I truly have to put my story out there, but what's going to get me to write the book? Well, then I said, wait, what if I make the book a four purpose book? So I've decided that 50% of all the proceeds are going to go to uh, fallen firefighter organizations. I haven't figured that part out yet. I will, but okay. Once that happened, then it's like, okay, everything starts flowing. Like the, I'm, yeah. I'm fueling the fire. Yeah. And then for me, it's like committing to an event. Like you said, you're going to be speaking at an event in January. Yeah. I tell people all the time, you cannot beat the power of immersion at an event like John yeah. Maxwell events or, yeah. or it doesn't matter. It's just go to an event. So same thing where it's like, well, okay, well I went to, I decided to not just necessarily go to a physical event, but I immersed myself into a mastermind program mm -hmm. for self-publishing. Mm -hmm. So I had to pony up, you know, three, four grand to buy into this, but now, okay, I've spent the money. So there mm -hmm. I removed one more roadblock. It's like, Scott, you just dropped a boatload of coin. You're in a 90 day aggressive game plan in this program. So let's put up or shut up. So I'm just mm -hmm. giving you some of the examples of the fuel that I've done in the past few months, because now in the past literally two months, I've already completed 25,000 words. So, yeah. okay. Wow. It's like put it on the calendar and then figure it out. Yeah. Well, and then I kept using the excuses. I don't have the time to write your, your, right. your, your website, but I don't right. have the time. Right. So then I was like, okay, hack. You'll appreciate this. I'm a podcaster. My fiance says I talk too much. So I was like, great. I, I'm, I have the gift of gab. So I said, well, why do I have to write the book? Why can't I speak the book? Ooh, so then smart. I find I, I listen. I, 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 I'm a viral listener of podcasts. I'm not just yeah. a podcaster. I'm listening to a podcast a couple months ago. Someone brings up the otter, like the animal, O T T E R dot A I app. They give you 600 free minutes of recording time per month, and the app will transcribe your, your recordings into text. Oh. Yeah, barrier gone. Hello. So that's yeah. how I've written 25,000 words is I, awesome. I mean, I'll, I'll be driving for a business trip. You know, like, like tomorrow, I'm going to head up to Albany, New York for some business meetings. I got like a three hour drive. Yeah. Bluetooth through the iPhone, running the app yeah. in the background. I'm just driving down the road, talking yeah. away. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's the thing is that so many times we give ourselves these barriers that aren't even really that true. And there's always a way to figure it out. Yeah. Well, and actually, I learned well, you just a lot said of there. This. We got, Go ahead. we got to pause on that. Like, yeah, there's always a way to figure it out. There is. That's a mindset piece though, that not everybody hearing this has that yet. You, you got to dig into that. You got to dig into that with what well, you there's, know. Yeah. Well, what, that, what I've learned, right, is that there's a myriad of options. And I think so many times we believe that we're fixed or stuck or like we, we stay in this small view when really there's probably 10 or 15 ways to get to the same destination, but we don't even see it. It's like seeing the tree versus the whole forest, right? We're so closed minded that we don't even take a step back to see that there's lots of other options. True. I learned this time management thing when I was writing design your dream life workbook. And I was like, I'm going to do it in my spare time. Hmm. That didn't happen. Yeah. Just, just like say, working out or anything, right? You're never thinking. Didn't you hint you have two kids as well? So it's yeah, like you are exactly. a you're, you're a classic busy busy mom, right? My spare time is making dinner and getting ready for bed, and <laughs> so I had to put it in my calendar. Hmm. I had to rearrange my priorities. I had to put it in so it had a slot, and and then I would do it because I knew once I had a plan, I would execute. That's yeah. but creating the plan is what a lot of times we don't do because we don't take a step back to really prioritize or think about what we want. I tell people all the time, I mean, and you'll, you'll see a lot of influencers like yourself. Sometimes you got to have somebody literally walk you through the math, but it's like, mm -hmm. guys, there's 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. If you're a healthy person, you're trying to bang out, let's say, let's say you're getting the full eight hours. Boom. Okay. Do the math. 24 minus eight. All right. We're at 16. Let's say you work at a classic nine to five shift. Let's add in uh, some commute time, long breaks. Let's, let's subtract nine. Heck, let's go ahead and take 10 hours out of that. Okay, now you got six hours left in the day. Mm -hmm. Okay, in your case, because uh, I don't know, I don't have kids. 
I don't plan on having them. Uh, so we, we, my fiance and I were like, nah, we're good. So more power to you guys and powerful parenting. But how long does it take you to prep meals in the morning and the evening? I don't know. Can you give me a ballpark? Um, from seven to eight, we're getting ready in the morning. Okay. I would say. And is it another hour for dinner in the evening? I'm guessing too, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So let's take another two hours off there. So now we're down to four. Okay. But also while you're doing that, maybe you could have a headset in listening to a podcast exactly. or an audio book, right? Yeah, there's always a way. Like yeah. here, here's the, here's the, that's what I'm, that's, I, I wanted us to get into that because it's yeah. like. Driving to school, I'm constantly have my Bluetooth in. Boom. I'm driving around town. I'm in between appointments. I mean, I listen to several podcasts a day myself because I know that it's kind of my job to stay growing. <laughs> so I have something to teach people. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I literally, I have, I mean, how many favorite podcasts do you listen to? You have a podcast. So. I do. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I'm, I have like four that I listen to consistently. There you go. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm going into my Stitcher app right now. Uh -huh. I have 12 marked here, mm -hmm. but I don't, I'd say that I actually consistently weekly listen to probably four, mm -hmm. four of my top performers. And then when I'm just bored, I want to mix some other stuff in, I cycle in different ones. So, yeah. uh, but there's, there's two of those shows that I make sure I listen to every single episode. I don't miss mm -hmm. them. So yeah, it's interesting. Everybody's got different things, but that's the point is like how many thousands of hours you could be gaining. Yeah. In your well, even my workouts, I'm constantly listening during my workouts as well. It's like I work out, yes, to work out, but also because I know that it's going to give me personal development time. And I mean, that's a part of a part of my day and I and come back filled, not just sweaty. Well, I think that's part of your whole action planner, right? Is yeah. that before you can necessarily take the, the massive action, you got to start taking the smaller actions. And mm -hmm. I'm a huge, huge supporter of personal and professional development. And yeah, I even dabbled in the network marketing world. I still have a side hustle in that. I don't do a ton with it because I've been doing it for eight years and it's doing its thing. The point is though, I made the same mistake. I'm like, oh, I don't have time to grow that. But actually I can now say, I tell people all the time, I will thank the network marketing world and that company because it was like a personal personal and professional development platform mm -hmm. that also had a business tied to it. Mm -hmm. like going in and seeing motivational, inspirational speakers, giving you uh, ways to start making the time in your life and the coaching. It was like, oh, I can build a business. So I can thank having a side hustle in a network marketing world to then fueling my fire to finally build my entrepreneurial businesses that I'm, st I'm still doing now. It's like, oh, okay. But I had to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. I had to make the time. Mm -hmm. The time and that's is there. The thing, what I love about the network marketing world too is that it could really just be 15 minutes or an hour. It's but not you a really, lot. Yeah, it doesn't have to be 12 hours a day. It really is just intentional time. Yeah. Because they say a 1% shift will take you in a completely new direction. That's true. And so a half an hour a day, 15 minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever you got, when you're doing something intentional with that, you will be somewhere different in a year. Well, and there are people like myself, I, I, even though I know this game and I've been doing it for a while and I know the mindset stuff and I put in the work and I've worked with, I, I work with coaches and, but it's, it, there's still people like maybe myself that we get impatient when you're a high performer, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm actually going to bring up a complaint is that you get impatient with yourself once in a while. Like you want everything now, but th thanks to putting in the reps, you realize, okay, it's okay. Be patient with the process. Yeah. Fo oh, follow so a game plan. Yeah. Okay. Patience yeah. is a virtue. Joy in the journey has been a skill I get, I get to learn. <laughs> ah, I like that. Enjoying the journey as well. True. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I'm grad. I, I, I love where I am and I'm grateful, but I know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm ambitious. So I'm harmonizing gratitude and vision has been uh, a skill to learn because I don't want to wish now away because I'm so excited and I want to get there yesterday. Um, so I'm trying to like love, like enjoy, but still like be purposeful because I love the fact you brought up the keyword gratitude and purposeful, because I think up until last year, probably for a good three years up until last year, I was, I made myself commit to this daily gratitude app. It was mm -hmm. like a mini journal app. And the whole point was it got a little tedious from time to times, but in the end it was like, I didn't, I, I didn't realize what I was doing for my daily mindset. It was mm -hmm. 
just taking a few seconds to pause and appreciate what you have. Mm-hmm. And then being able to go back in that app and looking six months before what I was, what I was great for, for then, and look how much has been happened, what has shifted in six months, let alone 12 months, let alone two years, right? And, and that's I, a part of the Dream Life Daily Journal. The uh, first part of each day is a gratitude game. There we go. Make it fun. It's not just necessarily a list or something different each day. Like we t- one day we pretend like it's vacation day all day and you're just pretending like it's exactly what you want to do all day long. One day we pretend like it's your lucky day. Um, another day we talk about, you know, relationships that you're grateful for. And so it, it's pretty fun, but it does a lot for your mindset. It does a lot for your energy levels. It, you know, it sparks your reticular activating system to start seeing what is oh, already we got to pause working. on that. We got some fancy words getting thrown we out do. there real quick. We can't breeze over that. Let's That's dig into that. That's psychology talk right there. <laughs> okay. Help our, help our listeners. What, what are we digging on there? All right. So the reticular activating system is a part of your brain that's basically like your filter. Okay. Right? And we, we hear and we consume like 70,000 things throughout the day. Wow. And our brain can't handle all of that. So there's a filter that decides what's most important to you. So think about you are, you know, you're going to look for a car okay. and all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere. Um, yeah, that's true. And it was probably already there the whole time, but your brain didn't think it was important and still until you went driving it. And now you're looking at buying that car. Now your brain thinks it's important. I noticed and that now when all I of have friends buy cars. It. You, you what? I noticed that when I see friends get a new oh, car. Interesting. Yeah, If they change a car, because especially if it's a close friend, now I yep. notice that vehicle more. Yeah. It's just a yeah. part of your world and it's, and it was already there, but you didn't deem it important. So your brain didn't even notice it. Mm. And so we want to train our brain to notice what's working, to notice the, like what's, what's going well for you. And so when we start our day with a gratitude game, you kind of just like, you tell your mind, this is what I want you to see. Right. This is the filter that's important to me. And then, and what's amazing is that's what then you get. <laughs> so what do you think about the power of manifestation? <laughs> right. Cause some people think it's woo woo. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm like, well, it's on how you look at it now, because you have the psych background, uh-huh. there's some science to this. Let's bring there some is. of that science in, because I think that's the first thing that popped in my head. as you and I are talking right now, I'm like, I used to think it was the movie, the secret, the book, the secret. Uh-huh. I was yeah. like, what is this hokey crap? I mean, what is, what am I, what am I watching? What am I listening to? But yeah. my mindset was different then to where I am today. So things are seen and looked at differently. And I do understand manifestation in a more scientific way. So I'm intrigued to see how you would respond to that. Yeah. It's so interesting because I was trained in cognitive behavioral thinking or therapy, right? Mm -hmm. So CBT, you, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, which is all about thinking. Your thinking impacts your behavior, which impacts your outer world. And your, you know, and a lot of that is habitual. You have the um, neuro, like your brain pathways that are yeah, just kind of, your, they're just habits. Yeah. And so a lot of times our thinking is habitual too. And so I was trained in that and I taught people think positive. It's good for you and it will help you and you'll be nicer. And you know, it's just I mean, that easy. Just, yeah. yeah. Just like, <laughs> it's good for everyone to be positive. What a good world we live in. But then I really dug deep into the science. And because it really does change the way your brain is wired, you know, it's like you, if you think negative, depressing thoughts, then your brain physically changes. Like they can do a brain scan of your brain. It doesn't light up as much. It looks dead like a cactus. And then you could take a brain scan of somebody who's thinking positively and has, you know, is, and, and it's different things are wired, different pathways are triggered and different hormones turn on and off. And all of these things are impacted by the way we choose to think. Hmm. And we all have a choice, faith or fear, dead or alive, love or hate. You know, we've got that choice consistently throughout the day and it actually impacts the physical, your physical brain. Okay. And then because of that, because of the reticular activating system, because of the fact that like attracts like in this world and you're kind of attracted to what you're thinking about, you become what you think about takes on a whole nother level 
when you realize the quantum physics, the epigenetics, the neuroscience that are connected to our thought process. And we're, obviously, we're hinting, uh, if you ever watched The Secret or read The Secret, the big tagline there is the law of attraction, mm -hmm. which is directly tied to manifestation, and they all, go, they all work hand in hand. But I, I, I'm glad you dug into that because, again, it might seem woo-woo at first, but think about it. If it is woo-woo, but it brings about a more positive result in your life, why not at least be open to it, right? Well, it works every time. Yeah. I mean, even the Bible talks about the power of the tongue and taking your thoughts captive. And there's a lot of things that I'm like, oh, I learned about this in church the whole time. I just never <laughs> realized it was the same thing. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, I, now I'm not a heavy church guy. I don't actually I don't go at all. So, uh, but I, I'm also a modern person. And I, I usually tell people because I, here's the best part. I finished my degree at a Catholic university, by the way. So it yeah, was, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's really? everywhere. But the one thing I did appreciate about the one priest guy, whatever you call those guys, the white collars. <laughs> yeah. I'm very religious. Um, the point is, was I appreciate it. Cause he actually was one of the psychology professors and he was very modern. And, and he said, listen, he's like, I truly believe when it comes to your mind and your mindset is that you don't have to go to church a physical building to be, and I don't talk about religion on this show at all, by the way, so we're just having fun with this, but he's like, you don't need to go to a physical church to feel like you have faith in something. He's mm -hmm. like, some people, they need that. He said, but he's like, if you study the history of the physical structure of a church, he's like, it was built as a safe haven for people to go and practice. He's like, well, in the modern world, at least here in the USA, other countries, maybe not so much, but you pretty much have a pretty good flexibility to do what you see fit and practice as you see it and believe in what you want. So mm -hmm. he's like, you don't need to physically go to a building. He's like, if you want to do something else on your Sunday, then do that. He's like, so it was interesting hearing him say that. And I'm just yeah. tying that back to what we're talking about as far as the faith mindset and things of that nature, having faith in yourself and your abilities too. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, I think at the end of the day, we all long for some sort of connection, no matter what that is. And I know I have a prayer closet in my bedroom downstairs and it's just great. <laughs> it's just a matter of creating space to, to listen to yourself, to allow things to bubble up, to journal, to get it things out, grieve, you know, whatever we need to do. So then we can really be our best selves. And sometimes that means healing and letting go. Sometimes it means dreaming bigger and stepping into ourselves and being bold. And see, I love what you just said there. You, the, I got to write it down. You, you created space in your yeah. life. Like yeah. even if you physically made a space to have a prayer closet, whatever you call it, but it's like, okay, well you created a physical space for this, a safe place for you in your own home. Yeah. But the same thing is applied to your brain and your mindset. Like yeah. your brain wants to establish new neural pathways. It wants yeah. to establish new connectivity, but it needs new experiences mm -hmm. for that to happen. And that's why I'm loving we're geeking on this because people are afraid to make mistakes. People mm -hmm. are afraid to take the risks because maybe throughout their life, they, maybe they didn't always have the best go at things. So they've, 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 uh, they've now drawn the negativity mindset, right? We, so they have to start reprogramming positive steps, positive reactions, positive changes. Mm -hmm. So they can start embracing change better and more effectively. I tell people all the time, the only reason why I make so many things happen now is because I, I had to start slowly before. Now the momentum I have today is only because I started taking those steps, making the space in my schedule, making the space in my life for the personal development, the professional development. I wasn't always traveling to events and conferences. Yeah. I make the time. So yeah. I'm intrigued to see how you want to connect that over to everything that you stand for. So, Well, you, you cannot be what you cannot see. And so if you're in a bubble and you're only hanging around, like we mentioned earlier, those five people. One exercise real quick that I have people do is I take all seven areas of life and I have them rated on a scale of one to 10. 10 being like awesome, right? One mm -hmm. being like, not so much. I already, what know, I, find, I already know how you're gonna go answer this, but what are some of those seven? See, okay. I, when, I, when so, I studied psychology, we called them, this, uh, we called them, depending on who we were talking to, it was either six or it was seven domains of mm -hmm. life. So I'm intrigued mm -hmm. to see how you're gonna label these out because I'm gonna put them on the board. All right, so I've got friendship, family, finances. Wait, all together or all separate? All separate, so okay. those are three. 
friendship, family, finances, health, hobbies, business, and giving back. And I'm so glad when you I put giving back in there, thank you. So. Yes, yes. We, I mean, we all want to make a difference. I mean, honestly, I feel like that's fills most of us up consistently is when we feel like we're adding value. But I ask people to rate their lives or rate their seven areas on a scale of one to 10. And what I have found doing this all over the world is that most people would rate themselves an average of a four. And what happens when they're a four is that most of the time their friends are a four, their family's a four. They think a 10 is like so far away. I don't even want to try and they get comfortable at a four. So then even dreaming bigger seems so weird. And so you can see how it's just easy to stay there because a four becomes normal, a four becomes comfortable. It's, I mean, think about lunch. I mean, I remember when I was working, lunch was also known as complaint, like that was what you did, like who could complain the most? True. And you're just like in this world. And, and so when we talk about getting out of that world, we've got to go somewhere different. And that's where events come in, this immersion where you can really say, all right, who, who are the, what do I want to be like? And where do those people hang out? And then how can I go there? Because that's how I'm going to see that a 10 is possible. That is how I'm going to see that there are people living a 10. This is, you know, where I'm going to see that this, because you can't be what you cannot see if you don't ever see that. That's why I think most of us want to be like teachers and firemen when we grow up, because that's the only thing we see. And we've got to get outside our normal. It's funny routine. because I was like, I, I became a firefighter, but I don't remember if I actually <laughs> wanted to become a firefighter. It came, it came years later, but it's interesting. But Half my friends were te became teachers. And I'm like, I think it's because that's the only job you know about. <laughs> well, that and I don't know, from a pure perspective, teachers, I think teachers are one of the most important professions on the planet, one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're too structured. They're, there's some archaic stuff that they're still teaching. But, uh, the processes can be approved upon, but I have many, many friends. I went to Penn State as well, and I have many friends that were became teachers. Penn State turns out a lot of teachers. And most of them wanted, wanted to be able to necessarily give back, but pass mm -hmm. on knowledge. They just yeah. liked sharing knowledge. Well, and, and when you're impacted by a teacher, just like I was impacted at camp, camp for me was a place where I really grew and connected and were outside my comfort zone. I became a camp counselor for four summers because I knew the power of camp. And I think that's one reason why I love experiential like expos and events and getting outside and like taking people on a journey because I know that that impacted me so much. So, so yeah, how when you, you experience How long were you a counselor then? Um, during the summer. So two summers, I was in Asheville, North Carolina, and I did home repair. So I was like doing drywall and roofing and painting houses. And then the two summers after that, I worked in New York City with New York City foster kids. And we would bus the kids from the city out two hours and um, they'd like swim for the first time and see bugs. And oh, there um, you go. It was really entertaining. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> they I, mean, me a lot. I, I grew up on a farm, so it was, yeah. And then I, when I got into the business world, I was in cities all the time and people just don't get it. Like I bring it yeah. up on the show now. I'm like, I, you know, I, I milked goats as a kid and drank raw goat's milk. And people are like, what? Really? <laughs> like when I, when I was managing and coaching people in the, in the corporate space, we would do team building days. Mm -hmm. And we were not in New York City, by the way. This was this was Allentown, Pennsylvania, hour north of Philadelphia, hour and a half west of New York City. And like my employees, I mean, I probably had a, like probably half my team was of a Latin descent or Puerto Rican descent, um, some from the urban city of Allentown. And yeah, I would I would always ask everybody to share something unique about themselves, and then I would always wait, and then I I drop that bomb like farm kid turn you know guy in a suit and stuff or whatever, and they're like, no way. I'm like, yeah, like, why is that so hard to believe? It's, but it's, it's funny how the cultural shifts are different for uh -huh. everybody. So it's yeah. interesting you got to experience that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really special. We were like, these are cult stars. Mm. And it was just really fun to experience it with them for the first time. Oh my God, if you I took a New York City kid yes, and I you did. took him to, the first time I went West, it was 2007, 
uh, I, I got to hike the Havasupai tribal lands. They were like, they have their own section of canyons attached to the grand canyons where their tri- their, their main tribe is. So you got to hike down in through like basically a small version of the grand canyon. Uh-huh. And then I camped there. We were there for a week and where the campsite was, was in the bottom of the canyon. So when that, when the sun set, that sky lit up and you know, I was uh-huh. like, these yeah. are the brightest stars I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, even my five-year-old, I think he saw a star for the first time when he was four because he like goes to bed at seven. <laughs> we were like, what is that? I mean, it is. It's, but it's true. When you don't live in that environment, you don't even know what's possible. So no. there is an, an element of getting outside and at least seeing what's possible before you decide, well, like before you stay a four, right? Like yeah. go see what a 10's like. Well, and I love the scaling you did here because it's funny. I wrote yours on a board and I was like, okay, do I remember all six? I can't remember exactly how we branded them, but I mean, these are the six. So we, we focus, you focused on friendship, family, finances, health, hobbies, business, and giving back. Uh huh. Mine were also friendship slash relationships yeah. uh, because, uh, it is true. You can back this up that human beings are meant to interact with other human beings. Like yeah. if you lock yourself away with a video game yeah. all the time, you are not going to be a mentally healthy person. It's just yeah, really bad. True, true fact. Um, family, loved ones, like having love in your life. Uh, this could also be tied into your love relationships, but because really, family is love. It should be, and then your significant other, meaning fiance, future wife, husband, etc. Um, finance and money is a, is a domain. Health and fitness was a domain. Uh, spirituality, because it was a Catholic university. Spirituality, or in their case, they called it faith. Like having faith in something. Mm-hmm. helps you have faith in yourself too. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the growth, the mindset, the education piece. Like if you're not growing your mental game through education or continuing education or reading books and stuff like that, you got to exercise the brain. So I had mm-hmm. six, mm-hmm. Um, but we did the same thing. We said, listen, mm-hmm. draw zero access and whether it's one through 10, one through five, just rank them. Mm-hmm. And then the way, the way the teacher explained it was the professor, he said, listen, He's like, you can really judge your current state of stress based on this graph. Mm -hmm. He said, most people, they're kind of run in the middle, but almost every single person is not going to be able to have all six or all seven perfectly balanced across that zero access. He's like, it's a part of life. You're going to have times where when you're back in school, like I was an adult student, I was back in school on nights and weekends. He's like, so your education is a high focus right now with your career because I was working my way through college. But he's like, for example, when was the last time you hung out with your family? Admittedly, my family was below the zero access. I had no romantic interest in my life at all. I was focused on my school, my career. Mm -hmm. So, but he said, he's like, here's the stress point. He's like, if you allow half of these domains to drop below the zero access, you're going to be a stressed out person. You got to at least try and maintain some of these. So it was interesting Mm -hmm. how he taught that. So I thought, I thought I'd share that with you. See see what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, I really like that. And I think I think a lot of times people will tell me that they're striving for balance. And what we've learned, right, is that balance isn't really it's a flow. Like you're going to yeah, flow in talk about flow states, right? You're going to like, flow in and out. Sometimes this is important, sometimes this is important, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And I and I think part of his explanation of that was allow. It's okay to have some of them drop. He's yeah. like, but the other thing is if you allow more than half of these to drop below. He's like, what are you doing with your life? I mean, that's yeah. a big wake up call. And he said, that's where a lot of people don't realize in it. And then it gets to that point yeah. and it's super, super dangerous. We were talking about the, obviously psychological health, the mental health. Uh, we were talking a lot about depression and yeah. the, the influence of the pharmaceutical industry and all this stuff. It's crazy. So, yeah. Um, what I find is I, I really do believe that we all can live. Like if we were to rate them one to 10, I think we all can live a 10. Like we all can really be living mm -hmm. and thriving at a 10 in all areas at the same time. But that doesn't mean you have a goal in all areas at the same time. You know, usually you put your effort, your focus into one, you create momentum, you grow that. And, and that is you know, important. And then it goes to another thing and you're, maybe it's your health for a season and then you're got good health success habits here. And then you go focus somewhere else. And so you're kind of, you're uh, ebbing. In my going. coaching, I tell people all the time, get your health and fitness dialed in. That's mm-hmm. gotta be your top priority. I, I said, listen, if you had to pick that one domain that always mm-hmm. stayed high, it's everything. It, it's, it bleeds it into truths. everything, doesn't it? It does. I mean, how, yeah. do you, how are you supposed to have the energy yeah. to write a book, write a journal, 
uh, to go speak on stage, to be a mother. Well, so much to two brainstorming children. happens when you're get those endorphins going. Yeah. I've run a few marathons and I did a bodybuilding competition a few years ago, which really helped me learn nutrition. I was going to ask was, you about that. Cause I could, I could you, you, you have a, an athletic build and I was like, there's something background. There's something <laughs> in her background there because I know a lot, I, I, from the network marketing world, we had a lot of athletes and I was like, yeah. Oh Yeah. I, 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 for example, I cannot stand, no offense, ladies and gentlemen, I don't like the, the, the anorexic looking runway models. I don't understand what that is. Like you need to have some muscle on you. Like it's okay to be fit, like be strong, be a strong woman. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. And the bodybuilding competition, I mean, I've always worked out and I've been interested in that, but I feel like that really taught me how to eat because before Mm -hmm. I was eating out. And so that taught me like how to cook nutritious food and eat whole foods and, uh, and in moderation and still have my treat every once in a while. Yeah. But guess what? The habits are so strong now that it's not hard. And yeah. I'm still drinking like a gallon of water a day and I'm still eating, you know, my tons of vegetables and I've just created habits. So now it's. You have the knowledge now because you put yeah. in the reps enough times. Like and I, I, don't I know if I didn't hydrate anymore. enough because I get tired. But if you don't understand, yeah. like a lot of fatigue is usually yeah. there's so much tied to something as simple as your hydration, people. Like it's yeah. she, she's dropping bombs for you. Like take take notes. <laughs> your hydration is so important. I, I can tell if I've been traveling a lot and I haven't hydrated yeah. properly, my fatigue sets in. I don't need another coffee. I do love coffee, but it is a diuretic. It is going to dehydrate you. So yes try and get some clear water in there besides your black water. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I love the fact you're hitting on this because this, everything is tied together. Everything is tied yeah. together. Um, yeah. So now do you, uh, actually, here's a question. Are you tying some of that into your journal project? Yeah. Okay. okay. So the journal, there's a couple, there's two different sections of each day. So each day um, actually is eight pages because you want to have time and space to write. So we've got the gratitude game. Then we have a prayer uh, space for prayer, meditation, journaling, just like being. Yeah, mindset because work. honestly, we could do the work, but if we're not being, like if we're not at peace, if we don't really believe that we can do it, if mm. we're grouchy and ornery, then like we could do the things and it's not going to get the results we're looking for. So we want to be, we want to like be whole and well-rounded. And then we talk about your dream life goal. And that's basically when you pick one of your seven areas and you pick the one that you want to focus on for the next 30 days and you have a consistent dream life goal for the next 30 days. Hmm. Uh, Someone asked me one time, do you have a new goal every day? And I was like, no, 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 no. You want to be consistent because that's the, that was driving (laughs) crazy. Yeah. Consistent. And so then you have your dream life goal. You have affirmations, visualizations connected to that goal because it goes from our head to our heart. We're not just going to say it, but we need to believe it. And then we go into our action items. So the dream life action items, what can I do for this goal today? But then I added dream relationship action and dream health action because we are well-rounded. Dream relationship action. Is that like like, like an equation? Like it's like a flow? Like what am I going to do today to pour into my relationships? What am I going to do today to impact my health? It could be as simple as text my spouse. I love you or schedule a date night with your child Mm -hmm. or just like send love to relationships and just make, remind yourself, right. That that's an important piece of the equation. Um, But I included health and relationships in there because I think that we really can be a well-rounded like person and, and when we have healthy relationships and a healthy body, we're going to be more, we're going to get to our goal just that much faster. Because if you think about drama in someone's life, yeah. someone who's living in drama, someone who's living in chaos, someone who's living in confusion, it's typically surrounded or like about a relationship, um, their family, chaos, anger, lying, all of these things in unforgiveness hmm. or health issues. They don't feel good. They've got sickness, disease, or taking all these pills or tired. Like, so we, we really can, like when we focus on relationships and health and thrive in those areas, I think that will catapult us to improving on our dream life goal that much faster. I love that. Yeah. You're hitting on like all, I'm going to go with 10 cylinders, not even I know. We like totally need is, to hang out. I know. It's, <laughs> Speaking it's just, the same it's, language. There's like some flow going here. I'm loving it's it. Good. So. It's good. It's good. But, but, and again, I think that actually, because we are approaching towards the end of the show here on a time slot, but I think it's important to really hit on this point that you just made here, which is the relationships piece is key. Yeah. 
you don't have to disown your friends, your family, but they're not always going to be the most supportive depending on your endeavors. So Mm -hmm. getting out there and at least opening yourself up to connect with people outside of your normal inner circle, allow yourself to grow. And it's okay if some people that are in your, that have been your inner circle for years, don't get it. It's not your job to make them love everything that you do. Mm -hmm. You're going to do things that they don't get. Right. So opening yourself to new relationships is going to be key because that's the only thing that helped me grow too. Yeah. And, And I love the fact you're hitting on that. So. Yeah. And we do, I think, especially when, I mean, I don't want to, like if we're living in a four, right. And we'd feel bad about leaving our friends who are still at a four or still complaining or still X, Y, and Z when really we can't fix them. We can't change. They've got to decide it themselves. Just mm-hmm. like you mentioned, your why is your own, like lighting your own fire. So live your best life and you'll inspire them to do the same. But honestly, it's up to them at the end of the day. Anyway, it is, it is. We, uh, what, it's funny. It's an old mission statement from a company I used to work for, but I love it. I still use it to this day is we are all personally and collectively accountable for our results. So in the end, you still have to be personally accountable for whatever you expect in your life. You can't blame anybody else for your results. Um, just step up and own it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things you can help in personal and professional growth is as soon as you accept the fact that, listen, whatever happened, Yes, there's other people in the equation, but in the end, you are also in the equation. Mm -hmm. So if you want to change that result, then, and you can't expect them to change, you have to do it. So I don't, I can't stand when people are always passing the buck. Um, But also, I mean, the collectively piece is if you're actually working in a team or you're creating a mastermind group. So there is that social responsibility that, again, maybe your inner circle of friends or your inner circle of family aren't willing to help you be accountable on that goal. And that's why you reach out to influencers like yourself or you start following different podcast shows or you find a new favorite author because they're now putting the right information in your ears Mm -hmm. and in your head and helping establish and connect these new neural pathways to get you into a more positive mindset, to start bringing about more positive action, to then bring about the book or Mm -hmm. the movie or whatever your goals you want to create. Right. Mm -hmm. Am I hitting on stuff right here? Absolutely. (laughs) I have, I have mentors that I've never met before. But it's because I'm consuming everything that they put out because I want to keep up leveling. Yeah. And and again, I can still hang out with family and friends and be relational with them. Absolutely. That doesn't mean I'm learning from them. It doesn't mean that they're influencing yeah. me or my decisions. Yeah, my fiance's never listened to my podcast show. <laughs> it's okay. She yeah. loves Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan apparently is amazing. <laughs> Everybody loves Joe. It's so great, you know. I, I'm aspiring to, to reach Joe Rogan's popularity. So um, it's good to have goals. It's good to have goals. One time I sent my husband, I was like, you should really listen to this. And it was me and my stuff. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what did he say to that? I know. He laughed. I don't know that he's like fully listened to no, my, all my, he's, he's not binge listening to me, but he hears me all the time. So, you know. Well, and that's, that's, that's her point of view too. She doesn't like it when I talk about her on the show. And I was like, well, it's because I love you and you're a part of my life. So I was like, if you were talking to me five years ago, I, w- I didn't speak like this. I never was talking about love. I wasn't talking about vulnerability. None of that right. was happening. So there's been a lot of growth you know, in, in life. And I think that's part of, again, back to that psychology in the game. It's so cool to reflect back on where you were and where you are today. And that's why I love like when I went to your site, I saw action. And I saw a planner. I'm like, yeah, now we're talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because that's what people need to do in life. Stop being depressed or or, uh, upset with where you're at right now. Because where you're at right now is already the past. Let's focus Mm -hmm. on what you can be doing in the future. And it's going to take time, patience, Mm -hmm. but also action. Mm -hmm. Right? 1% change will take you somewhere completely different. Mm. There you go. Apply that to your weights in the gym. Just one percent, guys. Just one percent. You don't. You, you don't. You don't even stack a lot of plates on. Play the long game. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, listen. I'm gonna respect your time, and and I got some travel. I got to head out of town tonight, so I have a, a very very important task for you. I always ask my guest co-hosts who have rocked the mic today to close us out with some final words or a final message, but. I mean, your brand pretty much sells itself. I already told people earlier, make sure you go to denisewalsh.com, check out the action planner, stay tuned for the journal that's coming. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, is there an all-encompassing message over everything you're doing right now 
as we're recording here in 2018, you want to leave behind for the audience. Like if you, if they forget everybody else, we we shared so much amazing stuff tonight. So, uh, yeah. 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 What do you got? That's for a good us? nugget. You know, at the end of the day, I believe we were all created for more and we really all can live a dream 10 life. Um, and we can be content and ambitious. We can love where we are and know where we're going. So it's creating that space to tap in, dig deep, and then go get it. And, and in a year, you can absolutely be in a different place. So why not start today? I love that. And again, ladies and gentlemen, a year is not that much time. It goes so, by so fast. <laughs> seriously, she's, she's, just, she's rocking it right now. So listen, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Denise walsh.com check her out follow her everywhere we're all we're all over social media uh, but again uh, our goal of the show we're here to fuel your health your business and your lifestyle and your mindset the psychology game is huge and she nailed it today so thanks for tuning in to another powerful live the fuel show i'll talk to you again on the next episode thanks for tuning in and again we're here to fuel your health your business your lifestyle later gang Hey there, Live the Fuel listeners. This is Scott Mulvaney, your chief intrepid officer, your podcast co-host and founder of Live the Fuel. Just want to take one to two minutes more of your time and give you a little extra value at the end of each of these episodes. Uh, first off, I wanted to make sure you guys got over to livethefuel.com and actually took advantage of my Super 7s resource guide. It's a free offer. And it just gives you uh, 21 different resources to fuel your own health, business, and or lifestyle success. Just some of the tools and applications that I've used and books that I've read uh, over the years to help me grow in a personal and a professional mindset. Now, while you're on the website, hop on over to the supported brand section. I created a new section on the website just to promote brands that I grow and have trusted in my personal and my professional life. I mean, there's, there's applications on there that I use in business-wise, but more importantly, healthy lifestyle-wise, there's companies that I've had founders on this show. Just quick name drop them. You got Eat Pilly Nuts, you got Pure Vitamin Club, you got my connection with Isogenics since 2010, since I was wild and firefighting. Love to be able to help you get healthy and fit, lose weight or improve your athletic performance, or heck, in my case, I'm 40 now, age better. And uh, another quick little plug on there is Villa Capelli. Love their olive oil. And real quick note, Villa Capelli and e Pilly Nuts, I have my own discount code. So go to lilyfield.com, click on the supporter brand section to get into the resources page, and you'll see my discount code. So enjoy that. Now, while you're on the website too, I've also now built another new tool for you guys, Fuel Library. So the Fuel Library is obviously, as it says, it's a library of the either digital audiobooks from Audible or physical books that I've either purchased, uh, borrowed, consumed, etc. cetera. Uh, heck, even actually half of these authors I've actually now had on the podcast. So feel free to go to Fuel Library. I've divided it into health, business, and lifestyle directed sections, and I've been building that out. I'm still looking to add a lot more content because there's tons of authors and amazing books out there. So again, go check that out as well. And then uh, two last things for you. One, Please, if you get a chance, get over to iTunes and give this show a review. It's going to help us grow the exposure and help other people out there in the world find Live the Fuel and also find these amazing co-hosts I bring on here to help them influence and hopefully positively change their health goals, their fitness goals, their business startup goals, their lifestyle, etc. So please, submit a review. I would love to be able to start reading your reviews on a future podcast. And the last thing I'm going to go in here with is my disclaimer. I'm throwing disclaimer in because honestly, I talk a lot about health on this show and business and obviously health and fitness impacts your lifestyle. So please, if you are suffering from a medical illness, a disease, etc., remember podcasts in general do not replace professional advice. So if you have concerns, please go obviously consult a professional. I do bring amazing professionals on this show, but in the end, this is free content that we're sharing over the podcast world. This does not replace obviously a one-on-one -on -one consultation, whether it be with a business consultant, a, uh, a lifestyle coach, etc., or obviously a health or medical doctor. So again, that's just my quick disclaimer. This is free content. Take it as such, but please see your professionals. Thanks for listening, gang. Talk to you guys again soon. Thank you for subscribing to Live the Fuel. Stay connected on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Live the Fuel. And remember, 